just a bloke in a bar. Welcome to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith and Denon Kemp. I'm very, I mean, I've had it for a few weeks, but I did want to bring it up to Smithy. Adding the Denon Kemp to it has really made me feel loved and welcomed and appreciated, mate. I feel appreciated. Perhaps, mate, well, well, it's a, it's the duo, mate. It hasn't just been me on this show. It's it's <laughs> it's Kempy and Smithy. It's it's mate the one-two punch. So I like it. It's it's got a better ring to it anyway. Yeah, I think so. Now finals footy, fight, mate. Yes. I'll tell you what. It's in the air. It's in the air. Now, I know I asked you off air, but I want the people to hear mm. mm-hmm. to hear Cameron Smith say that maybe he doesn't really miss it at the moment. He doesn't miss the footy. No. Wow. No, no. And, yeah, we were chatting off air, and you were, you were a little bit surprised by it, I think, Kempi. But, no, I'm, I'm, I've, uh, I just don't have that urge, which, yeah, I think confirms to me that, you know, it was the right decision to finish up. And it's been a long time now, like with nearly an entire season has passed since I finished. So it's a bit of old news, but um, yeah, no, it's um, I don't I don't feel that urge because finals are now here to go. Oh, geez, I wish I was still playing. Mm. That I, I think for certain there'll be a moment throughout the final series where I think I'd you know, I'd love to be out there with the boys right now. But no, nah, there's no um, there's absolutely no feeling in my bones whatsoever that I want to be back out there playing at the moment. Wow, that's surprising. I thought at mm. least there would be some part of you going, oh man, finals footy, the pointy nah. end of the season. That's where they get me best work done. Um, no way. Now, huge news dropping yesterday. Very surprising. Well, very surprising. Mm. Paul Green quits as Queensland Maroons coach. Speak to me, Smithy. Mm. Speak to me. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of chat about this over the past couple of weeks, hasn't there? And um, the QRL releasing a statement yesterday around uh, the coach and his future. And um, I think what it came down to was that I think Paul Green couldn't guarantee that he was going to be there long term for them. And I think that's what the QRL are looking for. I you know, my name has been tossed into this conversation and I can tell you right now and all the listeners out there, I have not spoken to a single person at the QRL about this job, um about the vacancy, about you know my interest in it at all. Um but I, I think that's what it come down to. I think the QRL were looking for someone that could commit long term to the head coaching role of the Queensland State of Origin side, a bit like Mal Meninga did for so long mm. because he didn't have any commitments with the NRL and and so he could focus all of his time on, you know, looking at player development, looking at, um, you know, putting a structure around the Origin series that could benefit the players and help them be in a position to play their very best football. Mate, it was an absolute bombshell. But what I'm surprised in the timing of it for Paul Green, talk about taking a risk. What if no job comes up? Or what if, yeah, that's right. you know, the Tigers, for example, like I think that the timing of it is very interesting. Tigers about to do mm. a review. Green quits mm. his job. I'm not saying he will get the Tigers job, but he's probably going to get the Tigers job. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm not saying he will, but I think he will. <laughs> well, that is that is the is the review at the West Tigers that that's happening right now, or, or that's completed? Do we know? It's if happening that's... as we speak, but yep. the the noise is growing. Like when when mm. a lot of journo's are going, oh, Madge's you know jobs under Gone. fire. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. that's getting they're getting information. From people that of course. want people for that to happen. Do you think that, you know, where do you see Greeny landing, you know, like as a coach? Yeah, well, that's, that's a position that he could find himself in next year as the head coach of the West Tigers. There's no doubt about that. There's a lot of pressure on Michael Maguire. They haven't had a great season. They look like a football side. And this is, from a player's point of view, I must say, Kempe, this is, um, this is quite concerning. They look like a footy team that wanted their coach sacked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we've heard, I've, we've heard that a couple of times, but I must back it up as well. They they just had no effort. They looked like they wanted a big change at their football club. And now I'm not I'm not talking because I've heard anything from that club, but that's just what it looked like. Yeah. Now that's that's just an opinion. I may be completely wrong, but you know the way they they went out and played with just little to no effort at all. Um, it looked like that. That's what they wanted to happen. Now, as we as we all know, that's the that's the first person that they that clubs look at. Now, it's the easiest option. Yeah, cheap for clubs easiest. when they yeah cheapest easiest to, to make a change is to get rid of the coach because it's harder. It's obviously harder to get rid of 20, 20 players mm. than it is to get rid of one coach. So um, yeah, a lot happening at the West Tigers at the moment. He is a guy that um, is a he's a premiership coach, mm. Paul Green. He's a premiership premiership coach. So. He understands what what um, winning looks like, 
um, you know, how to get a team up and about and, and playing finals football. So um, I think that was that was certainly a huge part of, of what happened um, with with his role ending at the Q- Queensland Rugby League. And just from the QRL's perspective, uh, firstly, mm. if they do approach you, Smithy, can you put my name forward? Just throw that out there. Can you just put, Absolutely. put my name forward? Uh, I'm not mm-hmm. expecting much. Matter of fact, I'll probably do it for free. Just let them know. <laughs> um, <laughs> what 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 role would you be looking for? Head coach. Just as a matter of interest. Oh, yeah. head coach. Yeah, well, I'm, aim for the stars. Oh, you mate, land on no the moon. worries. Aim for the stars. Easy. You land on the moon. Because if I go head coach and end up water boy, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, now, going forward with quick QRL though, yeah. what, yep. what, like some ideas I had were, and this is just you know obviously me and you haven't spoken yet about this, but some ideas no. I had were, um, you know, you get. Guys like your Slater, yourself, uh, you get Thurston, and then you get Wayne mm. to be like a director and kind of mentor you guys in the role over the next few years. Like, is there has there been? What, what's your thoughts personally as a Queensland going forward? Yeah, well, I've been asked about this before, and I spoke with um, Brent Reed, I think maybe last week or the week before about it, and he he actually questioned me about my interest in 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 the role, and I said to him, look, as a a head coaching role, it's it's not on my radar at the moment. Mm. It, it really isn't. I'm you know I'm really enjoying what I'm doing at the moment. Um, you know, post playing career. Um, you know, on this great show with you, mate. I'm um, doing a little bit of other work with um, you know Channel Nine, but you know, the commitments outside of that, they they really need to fit in with with what I'm doing in my life at the moment, particularly mm. with you know some of the com- media commitments and 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 things with my family. Um, and I understand that. You know, Origin is only three games, but there's a lot more to it than that. Mm. You know, you look at what Brad Fittler has done with New South Wales um, Rugby League. Um, you know, he's done a lot of stuff with, you know, pathways and development and things like that. And he, and he takes a a lot of interest in, in those younger players coming through. Now, he doesn't just turn up on day one of, of um, the camp for game one mm. and start doing his work. And he, he's planning and plotting and, and thinking about ways that he can have this New South Wales side best prepared to beat Queensland. So it's, it, th- there's a lot more work into it than, than people think. Mm. Now, anyone can throw their hand up and say, well, you know, I've played for Queensland. I can go and coach them. Well, it, it's not true. You need to be fully committed to the job and, and you need to be prepared to put in a lot of hard work to, to, to give, to give the players the very best opportunity of going out and playing well and winning because it's a hard thing to do. You look at, particularly with New South Wales at the moment and, and the talent that they have at their disposal. Mm. It's, it's crazy. You know, like it is crazy. They've got a very good side at the moment and, and Queensland have a lot of work to do to be able to, to try and come back and, and take the, tr- the shield off them. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people don't realize Brad Fittler's actually been a part of the New South Wales system for nearly 10 years. You know, they're, the, the head of That's football right. was put together. He was a big part of that. So a lot of the players you're seeing, Fittler has identified them years ago and said, "That's right. I'm going to build this. For example, a perfect example is a guy like Cleary. Now, his first mm. couple of origins, he didn't really impact the game. And Fittler made a, a decision to, I'm going to stick with this guy because I know that if he gets the experience now, in a few years' time, he's going to deliver. And to your point, you can't just go in there and go, oh, I'm going to coach one game a year or one series a year. You need to be doing what, what Meninga did. You know, you guys built mm-hmm. a unique culture that was specific to that generation. Yeah. And then so um, the person going forward, would you – do you think that, that, you know, would it be one of the younger players? And Like, who do you think would suit that role because it is going to be a long-term thing? <clears throat> yeah, well, it's a, it's a difficult one because you, you look at – I guess Queenslanders or Queensland coaches that are available at the moment. Well, Paul Green was the only one. Mm. Mm. Um, and now you look at sort of Wayne Bennett. I don't think Wayne will put his hand up to coach Queensland again, mm. um, given you know where he's at in his career. And he come back in twenty twenty and and allowed or, or helped the the what was it the worst Queensland team ever assembled to, yeah. to win that Origin series. So yep. I think yeah, that's a great legacy for him. Um, Obviously, Mal. He's well. He's the current Australian coach, and and I don't know what what the the rules or regulations are around him coming back to help out. Whether he has to step away from the Kangaroos' job or not, um, but certainly I could see him in a in a role playing as like a mentor or overseeing you know, the 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 Origin campaign. Mm. Um, but the name that keeps getting tossed up is is, is certainly Billy, mm. and you know I've spoken to him. Um, uh, 
you know, last year, I think it was, or, or the very beginning of this year, about you know, his interest in, in coaching Queensland. And, and, he, and he said, like, if, if it come up, then he'd certainly consider <clears throat> the head coaching role of, of Queensland. He's very passionate about the Queensland side. Um, you know, he, he's a selector, so he's heavily involved already. And, uh, you know, so I, I can certainly see him um, in there as a, as a head coach because he, he's a guy that he always wanted to make a difference. Mm. He always wanted to make a difference as a player, and I can see that, that same attribute in him as a coach. So I think over the next, you know, two or three weeks, we'll, we'll probably find out a lot more. But um, I'd say that, yeah, he's, he's the name that keeps getting tossed around. And, and people say Jonathan Thurston. Jonathan Thurston is already in there. Mm. He was an assistant coach this year. Okay. So he could possibly, you know, transition into a head coach as well. Um, so, you know, th- those two boys are probably the front runners along with maybe like a Mal or a Wayne Bennett as a mentor. Mate, crazy, crazy times. Maybe the start mm. of something beautiful. But don't forget to send in a text anytime, 0457 736 736. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith and myself. Just quickly, actually, I also have a beer. It's called Bloke in a Bar. Go to your local, buy it if you can. That'd be awesome. But uh, And this show is also brought to you by that beer. We always forget to do it, but um, we did it this week. So at least we're professional sometimes. Now we have some texts. <laughs> now, <laughs> now we have some texts coming through. Flying. We have texts flying in. Um, mm. Hi, guys. Just wondering... How Michael Hagen's name doesn't come into the conversation as he was important part of Mal's Mal yes uh, important part of Mal years Mal's years Roland. thought Smitty <clears throat> yeah no he was um, he was actually Mal's assistant for a long long time and he was doing some work with well he's currently still doing work with the Kangaroos I believe so uh, I guess that's that's why he hasn't been tossed up and and to be fair I don't know if if Hags would would want to go back there and, and do that job as I said it's uh, it's a, it's a fair commitment um, to do that, and he's been there and done that for a long, long time. Now, we've got another text here. What are your thoughts on Blake Taffy? He seems to make a few errors, but he's certainly enthusiastic with his kick returns. Reckon those errors mm. will uh, elucidate, wow, with a bit of a boosted confidence from the rest. I want to be honest with you. I don't know what that means, bro. So <laughs> um, it, sounds, it sounds intelligent, though, so I'm sure it wasn't an insult. Um, Look, Blake Taffy, I, I'll speak quickly on that because I was a similar-ish player in the sense mm. that I was, you know, smaller or, or whatever. Or even I'm nearly six foot, whatever. Um, I mean, I'm actually five eleven, Smithy, but <laughs> but I'm nearly six foot. That's close. To six when, foot. when you when you had your footy boots on, you were six foot. Absolutely, had platforms in them and everything. Uh, <laughs> I think the, the key the key to, to a guy like Taffy that it is really mm. good that he's energetic and that. But if you're not Latrell Mitchell and yep. you're a, a small nippy player, you cannot afford to make errors. That's that's mm. actually something that you bring to the side. Like for example. If Manu Vatava is my other winger, but he, mm-hmm. he, he has post-contact meters through the roof, you can yes. kind of say, all right, you, you get an error or two. Whereas a small winger, in my opinion, uh, Darius also used to have this philosophy. If you're yep. going to be a player like us, you cannot afford to make errors. So if he can fix that, I'm sure he can offer quite a lot. Thoughts, Smithy? What do you, well, I was going to go to you. What are your thoughts um, on Wayne naming Blake Taffy at fullback this week? I I was for, I was sure he was going to put Johnston back there. Yeah, it is int- in a, in a big match. Like like just just considering considering the style of play that Penrith have, um, where they they're very physical on their defensive sets, particularly when they get you down on um, your own try line. And Cleary's kicking game is as good as any half in in the game right now. He he is that monotonous with his kicking that he he will put the young fullback, a centimetre from his trial line every time they get an opportunity. Well, I thought the same thing, but then I remembered and, you know, I think Wayne learnt his lesson with Mansell on the wing and I think Wayne thinks yes. would, was thinking back to that game going, I need Johnson on the wing because I know Johnson will take those catches because, like, that, oh, pretty okay. much, yes. that pretty much lost in the game was Mansell's, mm. you know, like, no disrespect to Mansell, he's a great winger, no. but he made a lot of errors under the high ball. And oh, so, this is when Cleary was putting up those floating. Yes, yes. Bomb. Was, yeah, he tormented him. Exactly. Yep. So I think Johnson is a, a very, very safe player under the high ball. So he might have made mm-hmm. the decision of like, I can't afford to have a rookie on the wing and that happen again. And maybe Taffy right. is okay under the high ball maybe. Um, but yeah, I, you're right. It is. It's a very yeah. big game for him. Very, very big game. Mm. Uh, hey, Kempi and Cam, what are your thoughts on Bellamore being released? I thought he had been great. This is a Broncos fringe uh, front yes. rower to Manly. Um what do you think, Smithy? Yeah, oh, look, I, I was really surprised. And, uh, again, 
you know, off off the back of you know their their form in the in the sort of final month of the season was very promising. So and and he is a, a guy on the up, and I, I just thought that you know the position that they're in at the moment, they, they'd be looking for you know some some stability around their group and mm-hmm. trying to just trying to manage to to you know retain all of these guys to move forward and 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 I don't know yeah it's it's a it's a difficult one but um it's it's Manly's gain isn't it yeah Manly's gain and I also think that you know at the moment it seems there have been a bit of whispers that Tapao could be negotiating to go somewhere else from Manly so I mm. think I think Manly may have offered him more uh right, as well okay. as as well as the fact that a lot of people forget uh, Broncos still have Paddy Carrigan. They've got Fleg- Flegler. They've got Flegler, Haas. Yep. And so yes. I think it would that, that all would have come into the con- consideration to let him go. But he is a good player, yep. really good player. But now on to another okay player, Tom Travojevic. Yeah, See, he's okay. He's okay. Wow. Like, you know, you played rugby league for 125 years. Did you ever see a player as good as him in your de- your century of rugby that you played, league that you played? Um, look, he is in, uh, I guess, a, a a purple patch at the moment. One of a bit of a word or expression. He, it just, <laughs> I like it just, there, purple it patch, just, eh? just <laughs> don't worry, he'll be in a purple patch this Friday. Yes, um, yes, get uh, up him, get up him. Here we go. Actually, no, I'm getting fired up. <laughs> yeah. Settle down a bit, Smithy. Um, no, listen, listen. He he is playing the house down, and the the only time I can remember anyone being in that same sort of form um, as he's been in this year was Jared Hayne. Yeah. In uh, in 2009, where <clears throat> he went on a run of, I think, you know, off the top of my head, I think it was like seven. He got seven consecutive men of the matches, which sort of catapulted Parramatta into the finals, mm. and they eventually played in the grand final um, in in 09. Um, that's really the only player I can think about that had so much influence on the result for his team. Mm. Now, now I know he sat out the first month of the year with his hamstring injury. Um, you know, we all know he got a little bit carried away going down the Manly Corso, but that's, that's all forgotten now. Um, he's learned some lessons there, Tommy. But um, as soon as he come back, as soon as he they, they were a completely different football side. Yeah, and you know, like he, the the weekends match, like what 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 were the stats that we were talking about just off air before? So weekend stats for the great Tom Travojevic: three hundred and two meters, three tries, two try assists, nineteen tackle breaks, six. Line breaks and a line break assist. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, those tackle breaks, they all come in that, that try. Wow. Where he, he beat the team three times. It was Mate, like was an he, under seven. Was he covered in baby oil? Like, was he like oh, me? I don't know. Was he like me on the Gold Coast strutting through <laughs> surface? You can get slippery. I'm telling you, Smithy, you can get real slippery in the baby oil. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, mate. Well, yeah, look, he, and, and, you know, it, it, People discussing, you know, is he going to win the Delhi? He has to. He has to yeah. win the Delhi. I mean, he's been for all the matches that he's played in. He's been, <clears throat> you know, if he's not the best player, he's the second best player on the field. So he's mm. picking up at least three or two points every every game he's played. Nearly, sure. um, you know. So he wins the Delhi M. Um, he's certainly the best player in the competition um, this year. But I'll tell you what, mate. The the thing, yeah. There's lots of there's been talk during the week about you know his, his value now and. Mickey Mickey Innes come out and said he, he should be paid two million dollars. Two million dollars. If he can goal kick, two million dollars. Yeah, if he can goal kick. Now let's stop and think about that. Let's let's just let's just let's just take a step back and think about that. That's twenty percent of your entire salary cap. And and they're saying like whoever's got the money, pay him two million. All right, if the West Tigers or the Bulldogs gave Tom Trebojevic two million dollars. I'll tell you right now, they're still not winning a premiership. No, nah, nah, no. They're still like now. Like so, let's be fair, Ingham. Is he worth? Is he worth a lot of money? Yes, he is. Yeah, of course he is. And Manly, Manly will be doing everything they can to lock in a, a long term. I know he's he's still contracted there for another couple of years, I mm. believe. But they'll be they'll be looking at, at securing him pretty much to to lock him away for <clears throat> the rest of his career. I, I'd suggest. Oh yeah. Um, but. You know the the difference where the test is now for for Tommy is going to be this final series, absolutely, and particularly this Friday night. Now he had a fantastic game on the weekend, but let's stop and think and and, and have a look at the the opposition that he's playing against. Now that, that's not his fault. He he's yeah. playing against the opposition that he fronts up against. Yeah. It was the Cowboys. They've had a they've had an ordinary year. They wow. really have. Wow. Like you know, and they would admit that too. 
He is not going to get, I'm telling you right now, Kempi, he will not have the time and space that he got on the weekend against Melbourne. No way. No he way. Will ha- he will, I'm telling you right now, he will have the biggest crosshair on his head this weekend for Melbourne. Actually, uh, it's really interesting that you say that because so there's a, a show called About Even, a uh, great show, Hello Sport Podcast Boys. They actually did a deep dive into mm-hmm. uh, Craig Bellamy and basically what they did was they found that any high-quality team in finals footy, yes. the team that Melbourne Storm play, they, they target or identify. I don't know if this is by choice, mm-hmm. but it seems through mm-hmm. the numbers that Melbourne Storm go, okay, James Tedesco is the best player yes. in the team. We're gonna shut him down, and give. And they found that over the you know however many years Bellamy has been coaching, that mm-hmm. every single player that usually is a team's best player has one of their worst games statistically against the yep. Melbourne Storm because Melbourne Storm basically say, if you're gonna beat us, it has to be with your second, third, and four, uh, second, third, and fourth best players. Is that yep. something you talk about about targeting the best players? Yeah, and and it's more about you know identifying who adds the most value to the opposition. Yep. And and certainly, you know, we've just mentioned that, what Tom Trebojevic has given that side. Now, by the, as far as the stats go from the weekend, that was the that was the greatest uh, match ever played with, with since stats, have, since records have been... Yep. Um, so Gus Gould, been, came, Gus Gould going, came out. Yeah. yeah, Gus Gould came out and said, ever since that they've been doing using statistics to record games, it was yep. statistically the greatest ever game ever played. And also, he has... Four of the five greatest ever games ever played, and they were all this year. Matter of fact, his average is fifty percent mm-hmm. better than Tedesco's when Tedesco won the Dalian. M. See, that's just crazy. So automatically, without even looking at the stats, you can, it's just it's it's visually you can see it. Yeah. You can see the contribution that he has to that football side. So Craig Bellamy, there's no doubt he he. I don't know how much vision he'd be watching. He'd be watching in plenty of vision this week, but I'm, I'll guarantee you half of it will be on Tom. Yeah. And where he likes to pop up and where he likes to get the football. And, and of course, you, you're not going to take Tom Trebojevic out of the match. Mm. The the I guess the challenge that he'll put to his players this week will be to minimise the impact that Tom has on the match. And that's what I'm saying right now. We'll still see him have an impact on the game. Mm. but But the difference is, is... The biggest challenge for Tom now is to come out and perform the way he has throughout this season when he's played against those lesser teams mm. and to do it now when he's playing against the teams that, that have, have you know finished higher than them on, on the ladder. So he's going to have to face, he's going to have to face obviously Melbourne this Friday, mm. more than likely have to play Penrith or South at some stage. Mm. Absolutely. And also get Bellamy to check him for baby oil before he runs on the field. I'm <laughs> that could be, that, I think that's a secret. I think that's a secret. Um, anyway, this is a captain's run. Shoot us a text 0457 736 736. Text here, Smithy. Hey, Kempy and Smithy, dribbler Luke here. Everyone has already put a line through the bunnies, but are they forgetting this is the same bunnies that put 60 mm. on the roosters without Latrell and 46 on the Knights? Thoughts, Smithy? Yeah, look, I, you know, I haven't put a line through them. It, it's it's going to be you know, more difficult for them to go all the way now, but they're certainly not out of this match. And and to be fair, you know, I don't think Penrith have been playing their best football either. You know, they they were a little bit scratchy early in the match last week, but they uh, they they finished strongly and and put some points on the board. But I, I wouldn't be, geez, I wouldn't be putting a line through the bunnies. They're a they're a very good side, and and you know, they've still got class players playing there. So you know, while you still still got Reynolds, um, you know, Walker. You know, Cook, all these players in in that side, you, you can't write them off, can you? Like, you know, I, I feel as though like, what are the price? Like, they've given they're paying four bucks to win on on the weekend, but you know, I think it might be a, a closer match than what everyone thinks. Yeah, and also we have to remember this side on paper. You know, the Queensland side was getting absolutely annihilated on paper. They had no chance to win against New South mm. Wales. So you think a Wayne Bennett-led side with only missing one of his... Yes, he is a superstar. He's unbelievable. Yeah. But you've still got Cody Walker. You've still got Adam Reynolds, Cameron Murray, Damian Cook, uh, Bird. Gagai. Gagai. Like, this is still a very, very good side. Yep. So I agree. I definitely think it's going to still be a very competitive game. Um, now, mm. finals footy. We've got the Storm versus Manly. We've already, you know, delved a bit deep into that. But where mm. do you think the game is won or lost in that first match there? 
Well, yeah, one side is, is going in with a, a, a lot of confidence, I guess, off the back of you know some big wins over recent weeks. Um, Storm have been a little bit unsettled, and and you know a lot of people have commented about their form leading into it. Haven't hasn't been at their peak, but I, I think they'll be ready to go. Um, still, some question marks around Munster and um, and Ado Car. So Ado Car's out. I think he didn't make. Has he been training. ruled out? I yeah, think no. So. He, which I thought would happen with a hamstring injury there, um, you know, given they've got the second chance, which mm. they won't be they won't be taking that mindset into the game thinking, well, you know, if we lose, it's okay. Yeah. We'll get players back. They'll, they'll want to win this one and get a week off. Um, but Cam Munster, that's a big one. That's a big one, Kempi. That's a big out. Like, we all know that, you know, he's a he's a big game player. Mm. Um, although they do have the luxury of, of slotting. Nico, Nico Hines just goes straight in. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for Cam Munster if he's not there. So we have to wait and see um, how that knee pulls up. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a really difficult one because if Manly, I, I feel as though if Manly get away to a really good start, mm. then this could be a danger match for Melbourne. You know, if, if Melbourne if Melbourne start a little bit slow out of the blocks and, and Manly, you know, score some early points and Tommy gets a little bit of confidence, then this could be a danger game for him. But, um yeah, they they've got they've got a lot of you know big game experience. Melbourne, mm. um, a lot of a lot of experienced players in that football side have been been in this situation many times over the last you know four or five years. If they turn up and play the, at their professional best, I feel as though they'll win this match. Yeah, I mean everyone knows the storm. What the storm need to do, they've done it so many times. If I'm Manly, I'm looking at the size of the storm. I'm looking at Harry Grant, Nico Hines being on the bench. I'm I'm. You know, around the 20-minute mark, I'm trying to condense the middle, push through mm-hmm. that middle. I think that the concern that the Storm had for a few weeks there, especially when Nelson was out. Nelson is that yep. big body they need. Finucane being out as well hurt them the last few weeks. But I still do believe that if Manly can take advantage of the fact that there are two smaller guys on the bench, yes. that yep. is their key to victory. Whereas if they don't, <clears throat> if they try to like just spread it and split the Storm apart on the edges, I don't see the point of that. I don't think that mm. it's... It, I think it's through the middle is their advantage is their size, um, yep. but yeah, I mean it's it's I, I'm tipping the Storm to win, but I think that it's going to be a fantastic game, unbelievable yep. game. Uh, now Roosters v the Titans, what are you thinking about this one? I think this mm. could be anything, anything. Yeah, it really could, mate, because um, I think they only had the one match against each other this year back in June, and uh, it was the Roosters that prevailed by one point. Yep. Sam Walker field goal, yep. like 35, 34, I think the score was. Um, so this could be anything. And, and off the back of the Titans victory on the weekend and the way they played, um, it, it really could be. And again, they're like, they're, paying, they're like, they're four bucks. The bookies have got them at four bucks. That's, that's a fair bit of value for you. Mm. Um, but again, like you just, you cannot, you cannot take away from the fact that the Roosters are a very, very professional football side. Yep. And, and again, they're missing a host of players more than, more than any other side in this final series. But they've got a great coach. They've got wonderful players who have played in big games. They just know how to get it done in these situations. And mm. and for the Titans, I, I, like how many players in that Titans squad have, have played finals footy? Mate, honestly, very, very. I mean, There'd t- be a handful. Maybe Tino, maybe Kevin, uh, Wallace. Mm. Outside of that. So, no you know, made. this is, yeah, like it's, it's a really big occasion for those guys. And you'd like to think that, <clears throat> yeah, they'll be up for it. Mm. But you know, like the pressure of finals, it, it it does funny things to play sometimes. And if they don't handle the occasion and the pressure of um, an elimination game, then you know, the, as I said, the Roosters will they'll they'll be very calm about you know their approach to this match and and what's needed to happen through the eighty minutes. Yeah, I think the the I think what some people are un- underestimating is that the Titans even throughout the year have put a lot of points on full strength top four sites. For example. Um, the Rabbitohs in the first half, they put yep. on a bunch of points. Manly, they yep. did as well. Now, obviously, that second half of them, they just faded away. So if mm-hmm. they can do this, a, fir- a similar first half, but then just hold on for 30 minutes even, they yep. might just be able to get the win. But if they don't win the first half, I can't see it being close. No, and and it's probably it, it's something that I'd like to think that they've addressed is their sort of second half sort of fade outs. Yep. Um, you know, only a few weeks ago, we seen them turn up against Melbourne and, and they led the game 12-0. Yeah. Or ten ten nil or twelve nil, whatever it was, after about fifteen or twenty, and and then yeah, you know, the storm just they just grinded the game out. Yeah. But um, you know, again, like if they they need to start really well, they need to start fast. They need to 
They need to start with a lot of intensity, and they need to maintain that for the 80 minutes because at some stage, Kempi, at some stage, if, if you know, these teams, they all, they all, they've got the opportunity in this finals. They don't just want to make up the numbers. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if, if, if they think they're a really good chance of winning this match, they're moving on. They're going to be playing anyone out of those top four yep. the following week. Mm-hmm. And they know that they're going to have to be on for 80 minutes um, in that match. So um, it's a big one. As I said, like it, it's, it could go either way. Um, I'm probably leaning towards the Roosters without mm. saying they'll win it. I'm probably leaning towards them just given you know, the, the, the caliber of players they still have playing for them and, and their understanding of what's needed at finals time. Yeah, I think guys like Hargreaves, Satili, Angus Crichton, Victor Radley, these are still... Tedesco. Tedesco, these are top, Morris, top, top, top tier players. So mm. I just, the, the Roosters, they've been there, they've done it. This big occasion's not going to phase them one little bit. Whereas if if just one thing goes wrong for the Titans, it can really snowball. Uh, I think it's going to, it could be anything, but I'm going to tip the uh, Roosters to get the win. Uh, Panthers versus Rabbitohs, thoughts? Yeah, well, we touched on that a little bit, and a lot of people are saying, well, Rabbits are gone, you know, Latrell's not there, and, and Penrith will be too good. I, I still feel as though that they they will compete, you know, for this entire match. Now, um, you know, Penrith did what they had to do last last game. Yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, <clears throat> to get the win. But if if, if, if they come out and, and play their very best, <clears throat> then it might be a, a long night for the Rabbits. But but in saying that, I, I feel as though this is this is a really good matchup. This is a really good matchup, um, and we all know, and, and you know better than I do, Kempi Wayne. He'll have a few tricks up his sleeve for this week. There's no doubt about it. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about it that he'll he'll be talking to his players <clears throat> about playing a, a really good game. Sorry, the voice is going a little bit on me here. <laughs> um, that there's an opportunity to to put a huge effort in this week mm. and 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 find the week off mm. which i think it any team right now will be will be it would be a blessing in disguise yeah look i think the rabbitohs absolutely can put it to them but i believe that the first game of finals footy for the penrith panthers is might even be their best game because of the pain of last year i think that pain mm. we're going to see it in this match because it's it's just so important that they get off to a because a lot of people forget the Penrith Panthers played probably their worst footy during mm. the final series last year, so I think Ivan Cleary um, is going to make a point of this is the business end of the season. He learned his lessons last year. He learned that like being up for as long as they did actually faded out towards the end of the year. So I yeah. actually think it's going to be quite a big performance from the Panthers. Uh, I think the Rabbitohs will fight and hold on, but then eventually the Panthers will kind of. Not blow out the score, but win convincingly in the end. Okay. Yep. Um, but you know, in saying that, the Wayne Bennett magic—it it just yes. when you don't think it's going to be there, it's there. Now yep. the Eels versus the Knights. Thoughts? Um. Oh, look, toss a coin. Yeah. yeah. Toss a co- toss a coin for this one. It's uh, you know, both teams really haven't been setting the world on fire with with the way they played. Although the you know Parramatta. They had a, a very strong victory against Melbourne, mm. um, and, and the Knights. Yeah, they've been winning, but they ha- like they've just been sort of, you know, a bit bumbling along a little bit, particularly yeah. with their attack. Mm. And uh, you know, a, a, a loss on the weekend against Brisbane that that certainly wouldn't have done any favours for their confidence. Um, oh, look, this this is yeah. You know, I think if Parramatta if Parramatta turn up and play play well and. Uh, we're talking about this in every game if, if this team turns up yeah. and plays well. But that's it's just the situation we're in. I think Parramatta's best, the, the easiest way to put it, mate, if Par- Parramatta's best is better than Newcastle's best, I believe. Mm. Um, you know, so it, it's really, it's whatever team gets it right um, on Sunday, that that's the team will win. But it's really hard to, like, to say now that there's a clear sort of winner in this match. I, I can't really say that. Look, I don't know what I don't know what you're thinking about that, but that's the way I see it. Look, I think that this is actually the perfect game for the Eels. Like the last few years, they were top mm-hmm. four. They played yes. one of the top four. Whereas I think Brad Arthur, Brad Arthur and the boys are going to see this as a huge opportunity to finally get that win in final footy. Yes, it is against a side that was, you know, that finished seventh. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that as we know, Eels tend to be front runners. So if they could, yep. if they go into a game 
already confident, I actually think it could be one of their better performances because they know how big of an opportunity this is. This isn't the Storm. This isn't the Penrith Panthers. This is a mm-hmm. new Knights. You get your win in that first round of footy, and then who knows what happens after that in the first round of finals footy. So, What do you – tell me this. Do they feel a little bit more pressure given they are playing Newcastle, who they're expected to beat, but also – if, if it doesn't go well for them, they're gone. They're gone first up. They don't have the luxury of that second chance like they've had in the past two years. I, I just think you got uh, Campbell Gillard back. you got Junior Polo. I, I think it's going to be one of their better final performances mm. because yep. I, I just see them as like Mitchell Moses. I, I truly believe he's walking into this game thinking I'm the best half on the field and I'm one of the better players on the field. And when he has that confidence, usually he puts on a, a clinic. It's, it's teams yep. where usually anyway, other than Storm this year, teams where he, he doesn't have that confidence and he gets a bit rattled, starts going sideways constantly, that he mm-hmm. seems to struggle. So I think it's going to be a great performance from the Eels. I think they're going to get the win convincingly. There you go. There's your tips, listeners. Now, uh, that is the captain's run. We'll be back after the break. Uh, this is the captain's run with Cameron Smith for Best Sheds are even better sheds. Thanks to Best Sheds, massive spring savings. Bestsheds.com.au. When we come back, we catch up with the great Tristan from Tossport for the latest odds. Time for an odds update. Top Sport, giving you top dollar for everything NRL. Gamble responsibly. Welcome back to the captain's run. And we have the, my favorite part of the week, my favorite part of the day. It's earlier this week, which makes my day, it's better. My day's going to be better for a longer period of time because I have the great Tristan from Top Sport on the line here. How you going, mate? Very good, Kempy. Very good, Smithy. It's a exciting time of the year, isn't it? Footy finals on the horizon. So uh, looking forward to the big, big round of footy ahead. But yeah, cannot wait. Always good to chat to you guys. Mate, it's. Uh, I tell you what, Smithy reckons he he reckons he doesn't even he's not even feeling it. He reckons he does not even want to get up back on the field. <laughs> What's going on with that? <laughs> I think he's uh, enjoying talking to you and me so much, Dan. And so he's he's he, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's just yeah. I think I think that's the reason. Well, it's, especially this week too, when Tommy Drabojevic is playing, I don't want to be anywhere near that man at the moment. They no, don't. well, and, and and in the in the betting, like on that game, it's it's an interesting one because uh, mm-hmm. the these two sides played each other about six weeks ago, and and Manly were competitive mm-hmm. for a long time in that match, but um, but Melbourne kicked away late, so Melbourne is short. There is a little bit of doubt over Cam Munster, but we know how good the uh, the, the the Storm have been in covering players. If someone is out, I'm sure he will uh, line up on the field. He has been named, but it is a dollar thirty seven to Storm. Three fifteen manly and the line's eight and a half. So it's a cracking game to start the round off. Um and, and yeah, Melbourne are expected to win, but certainly a chance for the Seagulls mm. to cause the upset there. Tristo, if, if Cam Munster is ruled out, how does that market change? Where do you see the prices going? If if, if it ruled out if, if in any other side, if a player of that magnitude came out, it would shift to something like dollar sixty five if he was in any other right. side. I think with the form, I reckon with Nick Nico Hines coming into that side, they, they've got so much coverage there. I, I, they will definitely drift. I think they might go to a dollar forty five, dollar fifty. I still think they'll be very warm favourites to Storm. They showed even last week against the the Sharkies. There's so many players missing. I know there's a big golfing class between the Seagulls and the Sharks at the moment, but. Melbourne's just been covering injuries and players all year, so they've probably had the, they're probably in the best spot to be able to cover uh, these these changes if he does come out. But yeah, I would expect them to go to around about a dollar fifty if he were not to play. Where's our value lie this week with the finals footy? Is there any value bet you've got for us? Because I, I need something. I need something, Tristan, to get me up and going. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the game, and I, I like the last game, the Knights. I just think the Knights are going to are going to be very competitive in this game against the Eels. The Eels have been uh, have, haven't had the best of form over the last six weeks, and they bounced back with that massive effort against um, as the dog goes crazy here. Uh, but they, they bounced back to, to form there. At, he hates your tips. <laughs> he's hating your tips. He's like, he's, I can't believe he's actually back, back in the Knights. What an idiot! I, I think he's a para fan. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big para fan, so oh, he, he, at three dollars the uh, the, the night. So I think they're a little bit of value in the plus eight. But um, if, if Eels play like, like, like they did against the Storm, then they are going to be hard to beat. Newcastle have been on a winning streak up until last week, but probably haven't found their form. I just think with those key players at Tonga and Pierce, they might be building to this with their forward pack back at full strength. But what, what, what do you guys feel about that game? Mate, oh, we actually have to we have to call it a day early. Apologies, Tristan. Oh, no. We've got no time, mate. We've got no time, which has made me pretty sad. But thanks for uh, thanks for the call, mate. And make sure to gamble responsibly. And if you do gamble responsibly, do it on Top Sport. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. <laughs> we're, we're done and dust. We've got 20 seconds left. I'm, 
We're, we're, we're 20 seconds left, guys. It was a shamozzle. It's because we gave you so much value in a time. If you missed anything we captured from the show, make sure to download the, the podcast on the SEN app. This has been the captain's one with Cameron Smith for Best Sheds or even better sheds. Thanks to Best Sheds. Massive spring sizing. Bestsheds.com.au. Catch you next week.